Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanine. Big shout out to Asti. Big shout out to Philip, Oscar, uh, Marky Mark. Let's begin here with this article on the CryptoBasic.com. Big shout out to Bo Rabbit, Keith, uh, uh, Corey. It begins as such. Ripple discussed with UK government on crypto and XRP adoption in the UK. This doesn't surprise us. We've been... I think we just talked about something like this. We've been deep in the UK for a long time. And what did I say? I think it was in the last video. Well, we all know this. The two bank coins that are extremely deep in the United Kingdom are XRP and Quant. Two of them is, uh, interestingly enough, with, the, with, the, with some of the biggest potential ever. But let's read this little tidbit, see what's going on here. It says, a written evidence document submitted by Ripple to the UK Parliament discusses the potential benefits of XRP and other crypto assets to the UK government. Look, look if anything submitted by Ripple, of course, they're being nice by including other, I'm supposing, utility coins, of course, uh, most likely probably quant and such. But they're a for-profit company. They're going to push XRP. It's, it's part of the big product. It's part of the, being the best of the best. It's what makes them unique. But anyway, let's uh, scroll down here. It says, despite a case of growing prominence, the adoption of cryptocurrencies has faced hurdles in countries like the UK due to regulatory and environmental concerns. This is why I've been saying the whole time, a lot of people don't understand that. that that's what's, why everything's been held back. It says, to this end, Ripple submitted a written evidence document to the UK Parliament discussing the benefits of XRP, that's what I thought, and crypto to the country. In a recent tweet, Edward Farina head of social adoption at XRP Healthcare, called the attention of the XRP community to the document, highlighting its prominence in the grand scheme. Let's scroll down here. It says, despite the document being dated September 2022, it highlights the efforts at communication between Ripple and the UK government regarding XRP and crypto adoption and their potential benefits to the country's economic and financial standing. In the document, Ripple acknowledged the efforts put in by the UK authorities in regulating the nascent crypto industry. These efforts include the Crypto Asset Engagement Group proposed by the HM Treasury and the Financial Services Markets Bill. The bill introduced by the Parliament in July 2022 received royal assent on June 29, 2023. Things are moving forward. Ripple further shared insights into the rudiments of blockchain and crypto assets. The company highlighted XRP as the native token of the XRP ledger. It emphasized the asset's independence from Ripple Labs as a company. So this is very, very good developments. We're going to leave it right there. Once again, that's on the CryptoBasic.com. There's a lot more. The next section was titled Crypto Could Benefit the UK. And we know when they're talking about that, and I already see XRP mentioned multiple times here. They're talking about XRP. XRP is poised for global domination. We just have to get through a few of these little hurdles, continue to push uh, and make the right moves, in my humble opinion. Right. OK, so now let's move on to another little bit of information here. There's a whole lot happening. So now this is actually from Ripple's Twitter. And it says this. Well, there's a string of tweets they released here, and it says more than 90 percent of global finance leaders think blockchain in particular. And digital assets will signify will significantly impact business, finance, and society in the next three years. Three years. So we have so now we have another period of time to add to all of our thoughts, all of our calculations, just in case, right? So it's number two, 72% of finance decision makers expect to explore tokenization to drive innovation. The business opportunity of tokenized assets is expected to reach $16 trillion. By 2030, I think that's a conservative estimate, but that's just my humble opinion. So now, number three, third tweet here says, 58% of global payments leaders see faster payments as the number one value proposition uh, prop for incorporating hashtag crypto into their cross-border payments business. All right, so lots of powerful statements there. In other words, utility coins, bank coins, once again, they are in a, a prime position to dominate and move a large amount of capital. So, yeah, listen, it's no guarantees in anything. You got to say that because some people will take everything that you say as a guarantee, um, even though you're just 
doing a little bit of research and, and you know, divulging a little bit of news. So you have to say those things. Uh, but as of now, everything's looking really good in my humble opinion. So 72% of finance decision makers, that's, that's a huge swath. 90% of global finance leaders. And I think we saw numbers that were slightly higher than that from another organization. I can't remember who. So things are looking good on that front as well. I hope you all are having a good day out there. Uh, hopefully you're relaxed and um, life is going well for you. Your health is going well. You know, listen, I'm going to give you um, good energies as much as I possibly can. I don't know how else to phrase that. I'm just hoping the best for everybody, you know, including myself, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, peace of mind. Is something very special and that I hope the most for everybody, they have peace of mind. Um, you're getting some love during the day. If you're receiving anything, you're getting some love during the day. I know life can be hard and such, um, but just listen, listen, I appreciate everyone who's ever shown me love. It does not go unnoticed. I appreciate it greatly, greatly. I see in the comment section um, what people say, and I greatly appreciate it. I want you to know that, right? And I want you to know that Alphanim has love for you in return. I appreciate you greatly. Okay. All right. Listen, getting mushy on me. Let's, let's get to the next article. So anyway, so now we're going to get to the third article here. It's from you.today and it's titled XRP Ledger hits massive milestone in epic network growth. All right. All right. So once again, more good activity here. It says in a massive milestone for the XRP Ledger layer one blockchain, the XRP Ledger has successfully closed over 81 million ledgers. A ledger is a record of transactions that take place within the network in, a, in the context of blockchain technology. The achievement comes barely months after XRPL closed its 80 millionth ledger. The current ledger index is 81,000, I mean, uh, 81 million, my apologies, 81,069,941 per XRP ledger services, which monitors XRPL's growth. Uh, and obviously, there's going to be much more of that in the future, as, as long as everything continues to go well. The overall number of new addresses added to the XRP ledger increased significantly, reaching 138,790, an increase of 31.8% over the same period in 2022. Wow. In addition, quarterly revenue increased by 220%, uh, percent, I'm rounding that off, to $188,376. The recent quarter saw exceptional network activity on the XRP ledger as well. It says here, XRPL EVM sidechain. I'm skipping a little bit. I'm skipping. Skip it. Remember that toy? Skip it. <laughs> Anybody? I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> Is this a, what was that called when something happens in the past and people say that it was different? Is this a Mandela effect? You remember that? Skip it. Oh, man. We had some of the best toys back then, didn't we? Skip it. Light bright. What's, what's some of the epic toys? Skip it. Light bright. Remember those stickers? Garbage pail kids? I know. I know. Somebody's like, what? Garbage pail kids? Remember those stickers they used to have? It was like children. They lived in like garbage. I'm not kidding, folks. We had some wild toys in the 80s and, and, and 90s. Wild children stuff, right? <laughs> you remember, um, what was that one with the bugs? Remember Creepy Crawlers? <laughs> they, they came out with a version of Creepy Crawlers. We're going to get back to the articles. Don't worry. They came out with a version of Creepy Crawlers. They were like insects that you could pour this like plaster or rubber or something like that. I don't know what it is into a, a little itty bitty machine and it would mold it into a rubbery insect. Well, then they came out with an edible version. So you could pour like this candy substance into the, <laughs> into the little mini machine. It comes out as a roach and you're <laughs> supposed to eat it. <laughs> and let me tell you something. It was fantastic. Oh man. And we had, that was some, it was some crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff back then. Even the cartoons were wild back then. Yeah, I know. You can skip this. You can skip this whole chapter. Do you remember? Um, and I, I, I asked people this, and some people, they just haven't watched the cartoons that I used to watch. Do you remember this cartoon called Mutant League with Bones Justice? And they would play like sports and football, and they would get the arms and legs and stuff knocked off. But they would put them into like a rejuvenation tank and regenerate their body parts. You don't Oh, man, I know I'm not the only one who... Who remembers uh, Mut uh, Mutant League? <laughs> That's right. It was that was a real, that was a real uh, <laughs> cartoon. And I'll tell you what else. There wasn't. Some people complain about originality today. I know there's a lot of remakes, but let me tell you something. There wasn't a whole lot of originality. There was some. There was a. There was a good amount of originality in the 80s and 90s. But let me tell you, they copied a lot. 
listen, you had Ninja Turtles, right? Talking animals. You had uh, uh, street sharks, talking animals that fight. You had samurai pizza cats, talking animals that fight. You had, what was that one with the dinosaurs? What was the one with the dinosaurs? Anyway, they were talking dinosaurs that fight. So they were just copying and copying and copying. And don't let me get started with the fighting, the fighting shows. Like I said, you can skip this chapter and go to the next one. <laughs> the fighting shows, they all were copying each other. My goodness. We'll do this little this little segment here, and then we'll we'll get back to the articles. But you had Power Rangers, you had Voltron. All of these are so similar. You had Superhuman Samurai. You had VR Troopers. You had, um, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Beetle Bo- that was later, way later. Beetleborgs and uh, my my word. Anyway, I know I'm not the only one <laughs> who, rem- who remembers those things, but. But it was fun times back then. Oh yeah, it was real fun times. Let's get back to the get back to the, the crypto articles. We're, we're not here for your stories. We're here for crypto. All right. So now we get to this next X, XRP. <laughs> this next XRP article. <laughs> this one is also from you dot today. Okay. All right. I'm feeling real good right now. I like to share. So this article is titled Ripple versus e- SEC. I'm going to say ESC. My word, what's going on with me? XRP dominates crypto market with soaring value as verdict looms. Yes, yes, yes. I like to hear that. The XRP token has asserted its dominance in the crypto market ahead of the highly anticipated ruling in the SEC versus Ripple case, reports Kaiko. According to the latest research from the smart data portal, XRP has skyrocketed to become the third most traded token, trailing only Bitcoin and Ethereum in terms of volume and liquidity depth. I'll say this about Bitcoin, and I've been thinking it for weeks. I think I said this before. I think Bitcoin could have a bit of a pullback. I really do. Just looking at some of the things that are going on, some of the things that have been said by individuals who are big Bitcoin purchasers. I don't know. I think it'd be in for a pullback. And then after a pullback, then an explosion. Eh, You know, it's just what I'm saying. You know, I, I don't hold any Bitcoin. But I do have people that I know and I care about deeply that hold Bitcoin. So I keep up with it from time to time. So now let's uh, scroll down here. It says investors are now eagerly positioning themselves for the expected verdict, which has led to to a surge in the trading volume of XRP, especially on Korean exchanges. We know that XRP is loved in in, in, uh, South Korea 100 percent. And I think it's going to do very big things there in the future. It says the once dismissed token has defied expectations, climbing the ranks and capturing the attention of the entire crypto community. They have a beautiful chart here. Make sure you check it out. U.Today says speculation and anticipation have reached fever pitch as the legal battle enters a decisive phase. The protracted timeline far beyond initial March projections has only amplified the market's interest. It's it's, it's amplified interest, but it also has um, amplified a lot of angst. I'll just leave it at that. So with each passing day, more questions and intricate details surrounding the case emerge fueling discussion among not only crypto enthusiasts, but also legal experts closely following the proceedings. So everyone knows they had this little uh, thing here with the LBRY case that happened. I believe it happened yesterday where the judge sort of took a step back on clarifying sales in the secondary market. But I see that I'll see it in a positive way. You can look at it in both ways, a negative or a positive. I see it in a positive way because um, now with Judge Torres, Judge Torres can issue a much more clear precedent or statement on secondary sales of any of the bank coins, utility coins, et cetera, right? So it opens up that lane there to have something more definitive, more clearly definitive occur. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll keep up, we'll keep up to date with everything. So now let's move on here to this little bit of stellar news. So we've heard their announcements where they've let us know, hey, listen, Wisdom Tree, the Wisdom Tree, they're going to be launching their app. Wisdom Tree Prime is running on Stellar. And here we have it, folks. Today is the day. Stellar just uh, released this tweet an hour ago. It says, major congrats, strong arm. Wait a minute. That's my that's my emoji. No, I'm just kidding. But it says major congrats to Wisdom Tree. Then Wisdom Tree has this subtweet here. It says breaking news. Our new personal finance app, Wisdom Tree Prime, is live. 
It's live, folks. This is very good. Now, listen, I don't expect it much to happen immediately. I'm looking at the implications of this, the, uh, the impact it could have on the future. Listen, this is good, good data to have. So now other companies are going to see how this runs. They may want to use Stellar. They may want to build on Stellar. They may reach out to Stellar. So you have to give it some time. Let this run for a little while, right? And um, let everyone experience it. And then we may have some more companies come in. And then on top of that, in the future, when um, as this picks up, you never know. Maybe it does have some sort of impact on, on the chain. All of these different things that are going to bring congestion might trigger surge pricing. Every little bit counts. Until we get to that point of regulatory clarity, mass adoption, when everything's flowing, all this congestion, it all matters. This is huge. So now we have Wisdom Tree getting active, Franklin Templeton getting active, MoneyGram getting active, and they're just starting. This is just the starting point. It takes time for the buildup. I know, I know, but but this is absolutely fantastic in my humble opinion. Then, of course, they had another tweet that they released. This was maybe three hours ago. It says USDC on Stellar is now available on Coimi mobile apps. You can now unlock the power of fast transactions, sending and receiving USDC on Stellar across all Coimi platforms, which is always good. We want USDC everywhere. We want people sending USDC across Stellar, congesting, congesting everything, blocking it all up, right? We want certain transactions prioritized, which means they have to have a little bit more excellent in their account, right? We, whoever has the biggest transaction fee, or who, who pays the most, they get prioritized to have their thing go through their surge price. And we need congestion, congestion, congestion. That's how I look at it right now. It's just one possible variable um, that I'm looking at in the future, right? That could be very, very beneficial. That's just how I look at it. So these are two very, very good events all on today. Um, Stellar keep doing a good job. We'll see how things work out in the future. So now we're going to move on here. I'm trying to get through things a little bit more quickly today. All right. So now we have a little bit of Hedera news. The bank coins are on fire lately. So now Hedera says, this is from UDOT today as well. Make sure you check them out. It says Hedera HBAR to undergo mainnet upgrade. They're all, they were already so powerful, so good. If you think not, go read their white papers. It'll blow your mind. It says Hedera, a proof of stake distributed ledger, is set to receive a network security upgrade. Aren't they already... Was it? What did they say? They had military grade security, or was that XDC? It says Saucer Swap, a prominent DeFi platform on Hedera, made it known in a tweet that Hedera would be upgrading its mainnet to V0.39.0 at 4 p.m. UTC. Saucer Swap hints at its move to update its web app to match, integrating contract allowances and approvals. It says the HSCS. Hedera Smart Contract Service combines Hedera's third-generation native entity functionality with a highly optimized ethereal vir uh, Ethereum virtual machine. As stated earlier in a blog post, the July 11th HSCS update is expected to, to have a significant positive impact on user, DAP, and network security. Saucer Swap Core maintainers are responding to these changes by modifying and reordering their implementation of the Uniswap V2 router. In addition, SaucerSwap announced that before the Hedera Smart Contract Service security model update on July 11, 2023, it will roll out a new router contract and make some adjustments to its front end. We're going to stop right there. There's a little bit more here. All right. If you want to read the rest of that, hear the rest of that, it's on UDOT today. But everything's looking good on Hedera. I'm never worried about HBAR, ever. If you understand what they're into, you understand the infrastructure is just in the, in the main region alone. The governing council. Yeah, it's going to take a little take a little bit of time, but I see a very bright future for Hedera. They're doing a very good job, in my humble opinion, as of now. Now, let's move on to Cello. Oh, yeah, Cello. One of the bank coins that can explode the easiest. Listen, I said it before. I say it many times. That first bull run that we went through at the we came in when we came in the beginning of the channel, it wasn't a bull run, but we were just entering that like a couple months after we began the channel and then everything exploded. So we saw with our own eyes how easy 
I mean, cello exploded multiple times. Go look at the charts. Back then, everything was exploding. Everything we got when we got in, people hated the bank coins. I'll tell you that much right now. This tweet here says several cello ecosystem projects will also be featured at with uh, featured at the at funding commons. I, I always hate reading that little at sign there. It says join cello's foundation, Angelo PTK, social impact collective lead in workshops with the real stone of Good Dollar Org and M Barbosa of Impact Market. Here's the important part on crypto UBI in the wild. Universal basic income. We were just talking about this. And they're looking at universal basic income more and more around the world. Why? Because artificial intelligence is putting so many people out of jobs already. Already. I'm reading articles about certain uh, uh, certain fields where companies are relying on artificial intelligence. Now they don't even need some of the workers anymore. So now it's like, oh, okay, well, if. Machines are going to be doing a lot of work. I see machines at the the uh, the ports where they move a lot of the materials at. They have entire sections of the ports now are just all completely automated with machines. Warehouses, a large portion of the warehouses are now run by machines. And now a large part of the Internet jobs can be done with artificial intelligence. So what are all these people going to do if they have no jobs? If that's going to be increasing. And that's where. The universal basic income push comes and in and, and the World Economic Forum told everybody and they also said what the World Economic Forum. And I know a lot of people don't like the WEF and I understand. But their word carries power. So we have to take that into account. They said. They like cello. However you want to say it, cello, cello, I, doesn't matter to me. I say cello. I just want to make money off of it. That's all. So. Cello has been positioning itself for a long time to move that universal basic income. I think they're the only bank coin that has been trying to do that as one of its key use cases. And here you have it. They're going to be discussing it again. So I like this activity. They have a lot of activity actually going on with Cello right now. Go to their Twitter and just start scrolling. You're going to see, right? Let's leave that one there because I'm going to get to this little bit of Quant news because Quant has been on fire and Quant is another one like Cello explodes easy i love it it can at any time it can go off oh yeah oh yeah i think quant can go the the the, the fastest it can explode the fastest and it can go very high in my very very high in my humble opinion right not it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor you do what you want to do make your own decisions i'm just sharing my thoughts that's it i only represent me I'm not trying to change anybody's mind nothing like that this article here is from quant.network and it's titled, Another Milestone Towards Making Blockchain Simple, Trusted, and Future-Proof. Our platform now allows you to circumvent the need for, for cryptocurrency during the token deployment stage. Wait, because I know what you're thinking. I did a little bit more research into this. You see, what they're doing is they're allowing the companies now where they could just pay in fiat. But when it gets into the system, that fiat is converted into QNT. Everything QNT is at the core of everything that they do. It's a genius idea. So now the companies don't have to worry about, oh, how do I use this system? Because they, they do have concerns about that. Oh, who do I have to train? You don't have to train anybody now to use Overledger. That brings in the opportunity for even more uh, companies to be comfortable with using the new, new technologies, Overledger. They'll be using QNT without even knowing it. Which um, on uh, Quan's Twitter, they actually had a little, a, a little uh, picture posted with the description of how all of that takes place. It was underneath a, 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 a Gilbert Verdian tweet. It says a common com complaint for businesses building blockchain solutions is the fact that the public chains charge gas or transaction fees to perform functions. These are charged in cryptocurrencies, which means that the business that businesses have little choice but to hold crypto. On their balance sheets to cover these costs, which obviously at this particular time could be a little bit problematic. And as he's going to go going to say, he says that's a headache, not not least from a risk and accounting perspective. As of today, Overledger platform users will no longer have this problem when deploying tokens. Instead of having to hold cryptocurrency to pay for deployment for deployment gas fees, the de deployment gas fees. That's important to keep that specificity there. This is Overledger users can pay with platform credits. 
what do you think platform credits are which are charged in fiat currency yeah but when the fiat currency gets in there what is it converted into quant it says this new feature applies to all quant smart tokens base flex vary and integrate seamlessly with the overledger token flow as seen below oh then they hit them with the, the flow I said that like that made sense, <laughs> but they have like a nice little picture here by choosing to deploy with credits. You will use your platform credits and see the associated cost before proceeding. So they lay it all out here. Q and T will be flowing constantly, constantly. Um, also, their subscription fees are paid in Q and T. Like everything has to, has to do with Q and T when it comes to overledger. It's a beautiful thing how they're setting this all up, but also removing some of the headaches for the companies. I absolutely love that. Keep doing a good job, Quant. I expect big things out of you in the future. So now, we're going to end off here with a little bit of gold news. A little bit of gold news. So it says, this is from Kitco.com, and it's titled, Gold Repatriation in Full Swing as Countries Fear Sanctions. Of course, we told people a long time ago this, is, this was occurring, and this was going to be happening more and more. So more countries want to store gold reserves within their own borders, fearing a similar fate as Russia. We saw a slate of coordinated sanctions by the West following its invasion of redacted last year, according to the annual Investco Global Sovereign Asset Management Study. The West froze. OK, we can skip that part there. It says, quote, a substantial percentage of central banks are concerned about the precedent set by the U.S. freezing Russian reserves. The majority, 58%, agreeing that the event has made gold more attractive. Also, they need gold because of the, they just announced that they're going to be coming out that go, the BRICS common currency that's backed by gold. So all the, all the countries are going to need to start storing up more and more gold if they want to interact with that system, which is going to need the new financial system in the middle, in my humble opinion. This is also the survey showed 68% of respondents now store their physical gold holdings at home and 74% plan to do so in five years. In 2020, the percentage was at 50%. In one of the anonymous responses, a central bank explaining is explained his thinking, quote, we did have gold held in London, but now we've transferred it back to our country to hold as a safe haven asset and to keep it safe, unquote. Multipolar world coming in heavy. That is very good for the new financial system, it says. And according to Invesco's head of official institutions, Rod Ringrow, who was in charge of the survey, this sentiment was widely shared, quote, if it's my gold. Then I want it in my country has been the mantra we've seen in the last year or so, which if everyone is holding their own gold and getting record, buying record amounts of gold, that's that's another thing. So that's number one. Number two, you have retail people collecting record amounts of gold because they don't trust fiat anymore and they definitely don't trust the banks. I had an article up here about banks using allegedly, this is what the article said, using like some sort of holding accounts to hold customers funds in it was some strange activity that it just was not good for the customers maybe i'll put that posting up here if i actually have it screenshotted okay um but people do not trust the banks anymore a lot of banks have been freezing people's accounts for a variety of very silly reasons in my humble opinion um so more and more people getting into gold as a store of value a very stable store of value right um, obviously depending on where you get in and if, if you're holding bullion or if you're going by uh if you're going by digital asset prices and all those different things matter, of course. Uh, silver as well. You saw silver was up today. Silver was up to, what, $24 today. Very nice. Whoa. I didn't think we would see $24 that soon. Holy smokes. So um, as far as commodities, things are looking pretty good in my humble opinion. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the Monday.